Right guys, recruitment. Recruitment is going to be the biggest thorn in your side. More so when your business is doing over a million quid in construction, right? So I thought I'd do a quick video on this because funny enough, just this morning, one of the businesses I'm involved in had someone accept a job, contractors, uh, contracts manager's role has accepted the job. Now, the way that I like to do recruitment is a bit different to what most people do because if you're shit at recruitment, you're gonna recruit bad staff. That's the nuts and bolts of it. So you've got to become very, very good at recruiting people yourself as the owner. And this is very difficult, it's not easy. You will know there's a lot of shit out there, but there are the odd needed in the haystack of good staff that are out there. So what it starts with is a good job description of like what job you're looking for. Then the best way to start is then doing a telephone call with the applicants that you think are gonna be ideal, right? Because you can easily fucking arrange to meet loads of people and it's a waste of everyone's fucking time. So if you do a phone call first, get to know the person and see what they like, feel their vibe, because once you speak to someone, you get a, a general indication. Then from that point, I like to do a two-step interview process. Really, really good to do two interviews, not just one, because obviously you are investing your time to have someone come in your company, especially for a management role. And this is a management role we're talking about. And they're going to be representing you and your company. So is it worth spending the time at the front end to make sure it's the right person? Yes. Is it a bit silly just to recruit someone over a half an hour conversation and you end up chatting about the football and, you know, what's going on in normal life and just because you like them? And that two-step interview process is part one, the person. Do you actually like the person? Do you get on with them? Are they someone that you'd happily spend your time with them and one, represent the company as a whole, right? They've got to be a decent, honest, solid person. But obviously the second part is competency. Are they actually competent at the job? Have they actually got the experience? Are they already doing the job that you want them to do? Because when you're recruiting, don't try and recruit someone and make them into something they're not already. It's gonna cost you time as well as money to pay them and then fucking train them how you want them to be and show them how things should be. Yes, you're going to show them exactly how the company operates, which we will do, but you want them to have a level of experience that they're competent because you're going to be paying good money for these people as well. So you want to get all that sort of ironed out at the very start. If they're not competent, there's no point even fucking trying to interview them or take them on in the business. But then part two, if you get on well with them and they tick that box as well, and you go, do you know what? This person's got something. They've got potential. They could do the job logically and competently. I like them as well, and they've got the drive, they've got the hunger, and they're behind the company. The next part of that is then going, okay, are you now in a position to offer that person a job? Now, what most people do is they just phone them up and go, yeah, here's a job, like it or lump it. Believe it or not, some people fucking just text people and go, yeah, hi, great to meet you, I would like to offer you the job. That is not the fucking ground and the standard that you want to set as someone starting to work for you. Because you've got to bear in mind, everything that this person's doing is from the employee's perspective, everything you do is setting the ground for how you run the business. So you want this to be fucking really, really good. So when you send in the offer, you want to really clearly say, right, okay, this is the offer we're offering. So this is the money. This is the money side. This is how it works. This is the the, the set holidays, this is the hours of work, you know, all the formal boring stuff. But then it needs to also be, we've got some guy driving like a twat here. It needs to also be, um, right, what's, what's your role actually gonna be? What's your responsibilities? Like, and actually itemize, so it's bullet pointed. This is your role, this is what you will be responsible for. And then you wanna dig into, right, weekly you will be expected to do this. So in a contracts manager's role, it'll be, you know, it's not unfathomable to ask, you must go to each contract, each project, at least once per week. You've got to check in on the progress, you've got to deliver to program, you've got to deliver to the internal budget costs for the company, you've got to keep the labor happy, you've got to keep the client happy. Ultimately, it's quite a difficult job to do. But that's got to be written out, so it's nice and fucking clear because this is how you set really good accountability for the duration of that person working for you. And really, ultimately, you want to employ people that are gonna work for you for a fucking long time. So let's start it off right. And then after that, once you've got all that sort of stuff laid out, 
also like to lay out, right, okay, when are you actually gonna to speak to the manager, the person that's above that person you're recruiting? Now, what I like to operate is, especially for a contract manager role, daily check-in. So I think something like eight in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning, you actually speak to that person. So if you are the boss of that person, you wanna check in with them every day, what you got going on today, how's things, any problems, any issues, anything you could see that could become an issue. So you're in constant contact with that person. And then a weekly meeting to review all the jobs and going into next week. So right, is everything ordered? Is all the labor organized? Have the clients been spoken to? Have you done the pre-start meetings? Have you done all this type of stuff, yeah? And then after that, it, it highlights that right, quarterly you'll have a review, a mini like a coffee, how's things going on? How are you getting on? What could be improved from a company perspective? And then a yearly properly review as well when you actually bring all the staff together as a yearly meeting for the company really. And this is for management obviously, but it sets the tone that you're you're giving a shit. Because a lot of people recruit people and they never ever do any types of review. They sort of throw them in the deep end. And I've done this in the past. You throw them in the deep end, you go, well, that's your desk, that's your computer, that's John, that's Dave, Kettle's over there. See you later. And it, it's mad. I mean, again, I've done this and it's just not the way to recruit people because they're not going to pick up the ball and run with it like you or I would because we're the ones running the companies. You know, we're a different mindset. Employees need structure. They need clear direction. And it's a skill you have to learn of managing people. So that's that part. Then the next part is all about you putting down the, the key traits and qualities that you expect that person to operate at. And now this one, this one will flag some people, especially people in HR, like, oh, you shouldn't say this, but fuck them. This is coming from the point of view of the business owner, of how you want people to conduct themselves and operate in your business. And when you're a small business owner, you know, th this is what it is. You know, it's not some big corporate where everyone can get away with whatever they want and they can hide within the numbers these key roles of employing people, they're crucial to the success of your business. You've got to lay out clear how you expect to conduct, how you expect people to conduct themselves in your business. So I'll give you an idea of some of the things that I point out on this is, number one, you turn up every day with a good attitude. You turn up with a positive can-do attitude and a solution-focused attitude. That has to be a, a set standard and it's a value of the company, okay? The next one is timings. You're always on time. Five minutes early is on time. You want to adopt it. That's the policy that the company works to. This is all very basic stuff, but you're highlighting this into a job offer with someone and going, this is how I expect you to conduct yourself. Because the moment they don't do this, you can pull them on it and say, well, I made it very clear at the start. This is how I want you to operate. And this is where it all goes wrong because if you don't do this, people start taking the piss. And it's hard to pull people on stuff. And unfortunately, you don't want to be in a position of having to pull people on stuff. But does it happen? Yes, it fucking does, all the time. So if you set the fucking ground rule very early on and just highlight stuff, and I'll give you another um, another one that I'd put in on this is, especially for this role, contracts manager, is that the words, that's not my job, will never leave your mouth. You know, it's that whole vibe and attitude of we all muck in and get stuff done because you know, I know you guys listening to this as well, every hire is so important. And when you're a smaller company, there isn't enough people to be, well, Karen deals with this, Steve deals with this, John deals with this. It is a muck in, we're all involved and we're all a fucking team effort. And this is the vibe you want. You want high performing team vibe, morale, attitude going through that we all muck in. If one of us is losing, we all lose. We're all here together to get things done, to make sure every single job goes well to make sure all the labor delivers on time, on budget, and to a set standard. And this is what you want. So this is my take on recruitment. And that's it, that's it for today. I'm doing these daily videos of the stuff that's actually going on this stuff. It's real, it's genuine, there's no fucking bullshit to it. Hopefully you guys can learn from it. And that's it, so I'll see you on the next one.